Often people tell me they're thinking of selling or they want to start preparing to sell soon and so they call me or approach me to ask what they should and shouldn't do in preparation. And what they should do and is equally important to what they shouldn't do because a lot of times I see people wanting to spend a lot of money on some updates and repairs thinking it will get more value for the house when really it won't. So what I'm going to share today are the top 10 mistakes that I see people often make when they're getting ready to list for sale. Number one, selling your home before you're ready. Selling your home isn't just a quick call to your realtor, pick a date on the calendar, put a sign on your lawn and then get offers. There's a proper and detailed process to follow if you want the entire process to go smoothly and not backfire and if you want to eliminate stress, costly mistakes and of course get as much money as possible for your house or your condo. As the saying goes, fail to plan, plan to fail. Number two, Entering the market with false expectations and knowledge. I've posted a few videos recently on this channel on how media headlines and articles can sometimes be misleading for some people. I've also posted a video on the difference between a property assessment versus an appraisal versus a comparable market analysis and how your property can actually have three different values. I highly recommend you watch those videos because there's really important details in those videos about this exact topic. I'll put the titles and appropriate links for you to click on down below in the, so in the comment section below this video window. Number three, trying to sell your home privately without doing the proper research and or altering your expectations as to how easy it's going to be just so that it seems more convenient for you. While focused on saving money, you have to really explore if you're actually saving money. So for example, what if doing it yourself saves you a 5% commission fee, but a realtor who's high skilled and trained at negotiating would have gotten you 8 or 10 or 12% or more for your house than you were able to negotiate on your own with a buyer? And of course, what if you make a very small mistake on the paperwork or the disclosures and things you say that end up costing you thousands of dollars? When trying to save a commission, many people don't realize the mistakes and losses of a higher sale price can in fact cost them much more than the saving itself. Number four, not hiring the right realtor who's not only qualified but what many people forget is a realtor who's the right fit for you. Remember when hiring any professional, who they are, personality, ethics, empathy, integrity, things that they can't learn in a textbook or a marketing course, it's just part of who they are is just as important as what they know. Five years ago I wrote a Canadian bestseller a book called Choose Your Realtor Carefully. It wasn't about self-promotion or why you should hire me. I wrote it so that people would read it anywhere in any market and they could avoid the biggest hiring mistakes. And in my book I provided a bonus section with 18 important questions to ask any realtor that you might interview when looking to sell your house. Questions that most people would never think to ask. Then I also provided a section on what some good answers would be versus some answers that might or should cause red flags. It's not just about who has the most signs in your area or hiring a friend or a relative by default. It's not just about who has a fancy listing presentation and impresses you at the table. It's about you finding out their qualifications and skills and also the personal styles and services that they offer that might or might not be the perfect fit for you versus someone else. And hey, if you want a free copy of my book, just send me an email to say you saw this video and I'll be happy to send a copy to you. Number five mistake is hiring a friend or relative by default. Now that's not to say your friend or relative isn't qualified, but you also shouldn't choose them just by default or out of guilt if they're not the right fit or the most qualified to sell your house. It's one thing to have someone over for dinner and then they go home. But selling your home is a huge life-changing event that can either be very positive or very negative when it comes to emotions. It's also very likely your single largest asset and worth a lifetime of your hard-earned money. A driver who's 16 and inexperienced might not be the best choice to hire as a chauffeur for your fancy car. Whether you feel compelled to choose someone out of obligation or guilt 
or you have a long-standing rule that you will never work with family or friends or whatever the case may be my advice is don't worry if they're family and friends and don't worry about long-standing rules my advice is seek to hire whoever is most qualified and the best fit for you if your relative or friend is most qualified and the best fit go for it if they're not that could be a very expensive and stressful mistake. In other words, I tell people that emotion is the killer when it comes to selling your home. Emotion is a killer when it comes to negotiating or making important decisions. You have to remove all emotion. The best way to do that is to treat it like a business decision. Interview your relative or friends if you want, but also interview other candidates according to the interview questions like what I was suggesting in my book. Then, out of all the people you interview, hire the best fit and most ideal candidate, as if you were hiring for a business transaction, because you are. And by the way, if you prefer not to work with a relative or friend, but don't want to hurt their feelings, or you think someone else is more qualified or a better fit for you, in my book I offer some great ideas on how you can tell that relative or friend that you've hired someone else without burning bridges and without hurting their feelings. So keep that in mind. Number six, overspending on remodeling before um, selling just to add value. Some things might absolutely have to be updated. Other things might not get back a return on the money that it cost you. That's where an experienced realtor who's familiar with each upgrade and its perceived value to buyers in your area, it's worth its weight in gold. Some things will add tremendous value. Some things will just make it look prettier but you won't get that money back. Number seven, pricing your home based on unrealistic expectations. How much money you need uh, to make or you want to make versus what the market deems realistic or the market will bear. See my video called, Are There Risks to Underpricing Your Home When You List? Where in that video I outline three different pricing strategies and the pros and the cons to all three of those strategies so that you know which strategy is, strategy is right for you. I'll also put a link to that video in the comments below for you. Number eight, letting your emotions rule your decisions in negotiating. Like I said before, emotions are the root of what drives anyone to do anything. Selling your house is an emotional experience, but it's also a huge financial transaction. And like I said earlier, it's therefore a business transaction. Emotions lead to impulsive and or unrealistic decisions and choices. That's why having a third party who has the expertise you need, and even better if they're specifically trained in negotiating, will most definitely keep the most money in your pocket because they keep emotions out of it. By the way, another misconception many people make is they automatically assume that every realtor and every lawyer are trained in negotiating because, well, that's their business. Every realtor and every lawyer should be trained in negotiating because that is a huge part of their business. But many realtors and lawyers and other professionals are not specifically trained in negotiating and they just push offers back and forth across the table like it's a tennis match, unfortunately. There are strategies to negotiating that are proven by those of us who've invested in training and certification programs in training and negotiation to keep more money in your pocket. Number nine, trying to sell your home before it's physically ready. Quite honestly, there are so many items I could talk about just on this point alone that I'm gonna highly suggest that after this video, you watch my video called Top 10 Quick Staging Fixes that you can do yourself to prepare your home for sale for top dollar where in that, in that video I explicitly outlined many areas of reference and well, what you can do to get them ready before you list. I'll put the link below. And number 10, staying home and being present during showings. Sometimes sellers want to stay home for two common reasons. Either they don't trust strangers or other people in their home, or they think because they know the house better than anyone else, they can do the best job selling it to potential buyers when they come in. When buyers come into the home, they feel pressured or uncomfortable when you're home. They don't know you, so it feels very awkward for them. 
So what happens is they do a quick run through of the house and then they dart for the exit and then talk to their agent outside, maybe near their cars or on the sidewalk or on the road. That's bad because you want buyers to spend more time in your home picturing themselves living there. Picturing themselves and their kids or their pets or their significant others during holidays and summers and winters and special, special occasions. Since buying a home is driven more by emotion than analytics uh, and reasoning, you want buyers to feel like it's home. It's already home for them. Now, I cover this in much more detail and specifics in the other video, so make sure you check that out. The best thing you can do is A. Put away all of your valuables so you have nothing to fear about people taking anything. And note, nobody can come into your house without a licensed realtor accompanying them. So putting away anything small and valuable that can fit into a pocket is always a good idea. But worrying about vandalism or anything big disappearing shouldn't be a concern because their realtor is responsible for them and insured. And also with them the entire time. They're never left alone in your house. And then B, while you think you can sell your home uh, better than anyone that that means you've hired the wrong realtor quite frankly first of all if you've hired the right realtor then they not only have more experience selling homes but they're also not emotionally driven just like buyers make an emotional decision to buy sellers can be clouded by emotion if you come across too pushy or too desperate or make buyers feel uncomfortable even though that wasn't your intention if that's how your good intentions are perceived by the buyers, then buyers will run for the hills. I've seen it happen. I hope these 10, uh, top 10 uh, items have helped you understand more about getting ready to sell and when you put your home on the market. And remember, when it comes to real estate or any other process in life, if there was a better way, wouldn't you at least want to know about it? So if you're curious about the market or the value of your home or real estate in general, make sure you click on the red subscribe button. It's confidential, but it'll make sure that you know when I'm always adding market updates and statistics and tips and strategies and things like that. And they'll be sure to help you one day. And if you have questions about buying or selling, if you have questions about mortgages, investing, the real estate market in general, um, getting divorced and selling the matrimonial home or anything else real estate related, just send me an email with any questions you might have, mike at the reguy.ca. It's always strictly confidential and there's never any obligation or pressure. And hey, before you go, would you please click on the thumbs up button so this video can help other people with the same questions. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.